Welcome again. Right now we're in Romans chapter 5, verses 12, right through to the end of the chapter, verse 21. We're talking about the reign of sin versus the reign of Yeshua. Therefore, as sin entered into the world through one man, this is talking about Adam now, and death through sin, so death passed to all men because all sinned. For until the law... Sin was in the world. This is talking about the law of God now. Sin was in the world, but sin is not charged when there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam until Moshe, Moses, even over those whose sins weren't like Adam's disobedience, who is a foreshadowing of him who was to come. But the free gift isn't like the trespass. For if by the trespass of one, talking about Adam, the many died, much more did the grace of God and the gift of the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abound to the many. The gift is not as through one who sinned, for the judgment came by one to condemnation, but the free gift came of many trespasses to justification. For if by the trespass of one, death reigned through the one, so much more will those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one, Jesus Christ. So then, through one trespass, all men were condemned. Even so, through one act of righteousness, all men were justified to life. For as through the one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, even so through the obedience of one, many will be made righteous. The law came in that the trespass might abound. But where sin abounded, grace abounded more exceedingly. That as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now this, as I said in the last session, this is like the runway. We are ramping up here. This is like the calm before the storm. Paul said a lot here. And you know, really, I mean, we could go on for hours talking about what this all means. But Paul goes into it in detail, especially in Romans chapter 6, 7, and and eight. It is going to be awesome. It's going to be very exciting to get into this. One thing, you know, we should take away from this passage of scripture, and that is how much influence, how much our obedience or disobedience can affect millions of people. When you're disobeying God or when you're obeying God, you know, it can affect a lot of people. Let's not be selfish here to think that, you know, sin or righteousness just affects ourself. No, you know what? It can affect people for generations to come. We need to make sure we are on the right track. As Jesus said to his own 12, make every effort to stay on that narrow path, to go on that narrow path. Make every effort. Pray that you would be able to stand on that day, on the great day of the Lord, when Jesus comes back to judge the world. Pray that you'd be able to stand. I mean, listen, if Jesus owned 12 disciples that were basically living with him for a few years, if they needed to hear that, how much more we need to pray that we would be able to stand. And if you've got sin in your life, that brings weakness that brings weakness. Righteousness brings strength. You know, it says in the scriptures that the righteous are as bold as a lion. And so my prayer for you is that each one of you would be a wonderful example for everyone around you. And you know, it's much more than just being an example. I mean, look at Adam, look at Jesus, look how much Adam's disobedience affected us. Look how much Jesus' obedience affected us. And look how much your disobedience or obedience can affect millions of people as well. It is so vitally important. Seek God with all your heart. And if you do, you will find him and what a glorious experience that will be. Call upon him 
and he will show you things that will just blow your mind. I mean, he will show you great and mighty things, and it will be awesome. Love you guys.